Hi everyone, welcome to Yoga in Our City, sponsored by Kineticare. I'm Kate, I'll be leading us through this practice. For this practice, I'm recommending you have a cleared space in your home, perhaps you have a yoga mat, or if you don't, you can use any cleared space. If you're practicing on a hard surface like I am, I'm recommending that you have some type of blanket or towel to cushion the hard surface because we'll be spending a lot of time on the mat today. In addition to these two props, I'll also be using some yoga blocks and a cushion, but if you don't have those at home, it's okay. You can get as creative as you'd like with whatever you have around you. For example, maybe you use a pillow or a rolled up towel. Um, if you don't have any yoga blocks, you can use something like a flipped upside down pot from the kitchen. So feel free to make this practice your own and use any props that work best for your body. This practice is going to be a yin practice. In, in case you're new to yin, yin is a primarily seated practice where we hold postures for an extended period of time with the intention of strengthening, stimulating, and reviving the deeper connective tissues of the body. It can be a very restorative practice after the fact, but during the, during the practice itself, we're looking for a mild to moderate sensation in every pose. It's a very passive practice, so it involves a lot of meditation throughout. I'll be modeling each of the poses up here in my space, but just know that your body is not my body and it might not, your poses, nope, that was stupid. Hi everyone, welcome to Yoga in Our City, sponsored by Kineticare. I'm Kate, I'll be leading us through this practice together today. For this practice, I'm recommending you have a cleared space in your house, perhaps you have a yoga mat, or if you don't have a yoga mat, maybe you're just using a blanket or a towel. If you're practicing on a hard surface like I am, I'm recommending you use a blanket or a towel to soften the surface because we'll be spending a lot of time on our mat today. In addition to the mat and towel, I'll also be using two yoga blocks and a cushion today. If you don't have those in your home, that's okay. You can get as creative as you'd like with your props. For example, in place of a cushion, maybe you use a pillow or a rolled up towel. And in place of yoga blocks, perhaps you use a flipped upside down kitchen pot as long as it's safe to do so on your surface. It really doesn't matter what props you use as long as you feel comfortable in your body and you might not even need any props at all. This practice is going to be a yin practice. And for those of you who are new to yin, yin is a primarily seated practice where we hold the postures for an extended period of time, typically between two to five minutes for each pose, with the intention of stimulating, strengthening, and reviving the deeper connective tissues of the body. During the process, you're going to feel a mild to moderate sensation in whatever target area we're working on. And after the, the the practice is over, you might have a very restorative feeling. Um, and I'll walk you through how to obtain those sensations in each pose. When I'm using my props, just know that your body never has to look like mine. You might have to use your props a different way. Yoga is more about what each pose feels like in your practice versus what it looks like on the outside. And today's practice is going to be targeting our hips and our low spine. During the transitional months from summer into fall, into fall into winter like we're getting into now, our body tends to tense and up and we hold a lot of tension in our core. Um, so this practice is going to help with that and it's also a great practice for those of you who spend a lot of time sitting throughout the day. So with that said, let's begin by coming into a comfortable grounding posture. And the key word is comfortable here. So if seated is not comfortable for you, I invite you to explore standing up or lying down on the mat. And if you are choosing to sit as your grounding posture, perhaps you elevate the hips so they're higher than the knees. Wherever you are, if you're standing, lying down or seated, imagine there's an invisible string coming from the top of your head adding some space in between each vertebra. Your spine is long and tall, drawing shoulders away from the ears, resting hands down by the sides. And if it's comfortable to do so, gently close the eyes. A 
On your first few opening breaths of this grounding meditation, I invite you to notice where your attention goes. Without any judgment or manipulation, trying to change what you're experiencing in this moment, just notice what's drawing your attention. Is it a physical sensation? Perhaps where the sit bones meet the ground, or the feet meet the ground, or the spine meets the ground. Is it a temperature, a smell, a sound? Is it the breath or is it the mind? Whatever your attention goes to, honor that. Make note of where it is. When you feel your attention slip away, perhaps the mind takes over. Without any judgment, again, gently bring the attention back to your experience this moment. And know that it's the mind's job to think. So if the mind wanders, that's normal. It's a part of everyone's meditative practice. Meditation gets stronger the more times you bring that mind back to the present moment. Bring awareness back to your seat with you. Bringing one hand to heart center, one hand over the belly. With the eyes closed, if it's still comfortable to do so, breathe in through the nose, a full deep breath, filling the belly, the rib cage, and the chest with breath, feeling the breath enter the body with the hands, holding the breath in at the top for a count, and then exhaling the breath out through the nose, releasing from the chest, the rib cage, and then the belly, Pushing out more air than you think you need to, making your exhale longer than your inhale, noticing any sensations that enter your awareness with the breath. Breathing in again fully and deeply in through the nose, filling the belly, the rib cage, and the chest with breath, holding the breath in at the top for a count, feeling fully expanded with air, and then exhale the breath out through the nose, releasing from the chest, the rib cage, and then the belly. Making your exhale longer than your inhale. When you're ready, breathing in again through the nose, the last full deep three part breath, filling the belly, the rib cage, and the chest, holding the breath in at the top for a count. Sipping in a little bit more air, really expanding those lungs in that diaphragm. When you can't hold it in anymore, exhale the breath out through the nose, releasing from the chest, the rib cage, and the belly. When all the air has exited the body, return the hands down by your sides. And when you're ready, gently open the eyes. Take a moment to look around your environment, readjust your eyes to the lights and the sights of your external space. And then we'll begin by coming to a seated posture. We'll be doing a few postures with movement as a diagnostic tool just to get into your body and notice what your body is feeling today. So I invite you to come to a seated posture. Perhaps you're removing the cushion or the block beneath you if you're seated on one. Crisscrossing the legs if it's okay to do so. We're gonna start with our neck by inhale, lifting the chin up to the ceiling. 
Breathing into the front of the neck space here. Exhale, drop your right ear to your right shoulder, slowly making a big neck circle. Bringing your awareness to the neck space and really noticing what you noticed here. What's your body telling you? Is there a spot of your neck that is tender? Need some extra love today? Or is there pain? Which would indicate you need to avoid it? Or is there just some tightness that you're here to explore? Whatever it is, just notice and give yourself permission to pause anywhere where you feel like you need a few extra breaths into that space. The next time your chin is down towards your chest, pause there, breathing into the back of the neck space. And then when you're ready, inhale again, the right ear to the right shoulder, taking the next circle the opposite direction. Just as slow and gentle. Again, giving yourself permission to pause anywhere that feels good too. Next time your chin is up towards the ceiling, pausing there one last time, breathing into the front of the neck. If you, <clears throat> excuse me, if you'd like to add some more tension to the front of the neck, you can relax the jaw and then gently jut the bottom jaw out in front of the top teeth like a little bulldog. If you have the jaw jutted, relax the jaw and then inhale the head back up to center. Moving on to shoulder circles. Inhale, bring those shoulders up towards the ears. Exhale them down and away from the ears, making your shoulder circles as big and as slow as you can, noticing how the shoulders feel. After your fifth one, take them the opposite direction. When you're done with them forward, inhale those arms out in front of you, open them up wide, palms facing the screen, add some energy to those hands, your human tug of war, someone's pulling you to the right and the left at the same time. Exhale, bring those hands in front of you like you're pushing the screen away. Make a really tight fist with the hands, open the hands, bring the pointer finger and thumb come to touch, open, middle finger thumb touch, open, ring finger thumb touch, open, pinky finger thumb touch, open, take the wrist circles to the outside, noticing how the wrist joints feel, take the wrist circles to the inside, and then return the hands down by the sides. Inhale the right arm up to the ceiling, Exhale, take the right arm up and over to the left side body, using that left hand to support you so both sit bones stay firmly on the mat. We're not popping our hip up like this. Looking for a mild to moderate stretch in the right side body here. Notice where you feel this. Do you feel this in the upper part of your side or the lower part of your side? Is there tightness or soreness anywhere along this line? If there is, maybe you come out of it a little bit. If you're not feeling much of anything, perhaps you use your props to go a little bit deeper. Taking three deep breaths here. Inhale, use that right arm to pull you back up to center. Exhale, reach it across your body, grabbing onto your left knee. Left hand comes behind you, gazing over the left shoulder, doing a little twist to the left. 
Breathing deeply into the belly here, noticing how the spine feels, how the torso feels. Same check-in, is there any tightness? Is there any tenderness, any pain? These little movements before our actual yin postures will be information for you to change your practice so you can accommodate where your body is today. Exhale, release back to center. Other side, inhale, left arm comes up to the ceiling. Exhale, reach the left arm up and over the right side body. Now using that right hand to support you. Three deep breaths here as you bring your awareness to the left side. Is it the same or different as the right? Inhale, use that left hand to pull you back up to center. Bring that left hand across your body, grabbing onto your right knee. Right hand comes behind you, twisting open to the right, gazing over that right shoulder. Breathing deeply into the belly. How does the twist feel on this side? And exhale, release back to center. Now that you are in your body and hopefully more aware of how your body's doing today, we'll come into our first yin pose, which is going to be dragonfly. So coming onto your mat the long way, bringing your legs out in front of you to start and then slowly walk the legs open so you're making a V with the legs. And your V doesn't have to be very wide. We're going to start with a very small V, even if you're hyper flexible. And I invite you to just notice here by rocking side to side and forward and backward where your center is on your mat. If you are somebody who is being feels like gravity is pulling you backwards and you're really needing to engage your core just to maintain an upright posture, I invite you to elevate the hips by either sitting on a block, a cushion, a pillow, a rolled up towel, whatever it is, and explore this posture with the elevated hips. And if you are exploring this prop, also be aware of how the knees feel, because now that there's this space between the knees and the mat, if you have hyperflexive knees, it might add some extra pressure to the knees, or if you've had a former knee injury, you might feel some more tenderness here behind the backside of the knee. If that happens, you can add some props underneath the knees to cushion and support them. So just be aware of that if that happens. Another option for this, if it's too hard to maintain an upright posture is to do half dragonfly by bringing one foot in to the body at a time with one leg out. So take the next few breaths to explore what version of dragonfly works for you. And then once you have that version, Look for a mild to moderate sensation in the inside lines of the legs. This is our target area for this posture. And to find that mild to moderate sensation, we need to completely relax the legs. Yin is a very passive practice. We use gravity and props in our body's position to get into the poses that stimulate that deeper connective tissue. And the way we know that we're stimulating those tissues is by looking for that little feeling of zing, a mild to moderate sensation in the target area. So perhaps you feel that zing when you are in an upright position, you can stay right here. Perhaps you need to bring your hands behind you and lean away from the pose a little bit to feel that mild to moderate sensation. Or maybe you're somebody who needs to forward fold, bringing your torso down towards the ground in order to feel that sensation. So if we were all in a class together, everybody's dragonfly would look differently. So find your version where you feel your mild to moderate sensation and then completely relax the legs. Deepen your breathing and stay present with this mild to moderate sensation in the inside lines of the legs. Once we enter a yin posture, we hold this posture for an extended period of time, usually one to three minutes, 
sometimes longer in advanced classes. But as we do so, two things, three things may happen. One, you might maintain your mild to moderate sensation the entire time, in which case you would just stay right where you are. Two, you might notice the sensation slip away. Maybe you had a mild to moderate sensation to start, but it disappeared. If that's something you notice, that's your body's invitation to go a little bit deeper into the pose. Or the opposite might happen. You might begin to feel a sensation that goes from mild into painful. And if that's the case for you, that's your body signal to tell you that you've reached your threshold with this particular tissue and to come out of it a little bit. So keeping the awareness in the target area is extremely important for each of our poses. And just like the opening meditative practice, if the mind starts to wander off the map, maybe into the future or into the past, gently bring it back to the map. Bring your awareness back to the sensation you're feeling. It doesn't matter if you have to do that a hundred times in one minute. Every time you do it, you are strengthening the mind. Wherever you are in your dragonfly, add some weight to your hands and gently use the hands to walk the torso back to an upright position. So if your hands are behind you, you would walk them forward. If your hands are in front of you, you would walk them backward. Take a moment to maintain an upright posture and just notice how the inside lines of the legs feel. As we exit a pose, we want to do so just as gently as we got into the pose. So bring your hands behind the back sides of your thighs and use the hands to bring the feet back together, legs together, releasing the pose. Maybe the hands come behind you. Maybe you choose to add some gentle movements to the legs by rocking the feet from left to right. See if you can stay present with the target area as the pose is released so you feel the tissues regain their normal sensation. In yin, we go from pose to pose very carefully because we put our tissues, our muscles, our tendons, our ligaments, our bones, everything in our body is a tissue essentially. We put them into a vulnerable state when we maintain a pose for an extended period of time. So we never want to move quickly out of a pose or into another one. You want to take some time to allow those tissues to regain their normal sensation before we make our next move. So if you notice the legs have returned to their normal feeling, we will begin our second pose, which is going to be twisted, twisted deer. For this, please bring your hands behind you, palms facing the ground, fingertips pointed away from the body. We're going to bring our feet onto the mat, knees pointed up to the sky, and then we're going to walk our feet so they're wider than our hips and gently start to rock the knees from left to right to start. Just notice how this feels in the hips, the inside and the outside lines of the upper leg. And then at one point, you're going to just pause with both knees down towards the right. And if you were to look down at your legs, your legs might be making a shape like a windmill. Your right foot might be hovering over the left knee. That left foot might be facing the side or the back wall. 
notice how this feels. The target area here might be different for everybody depending on your skeletal structure, but you could potentially feel it in the outside of the left hip or the inside of the right leg. So notice if this is true for you. Relax the legs. You might choose to stay right here. This could be your pose for today. You don't have to add the twist if you're already feeling a mild to moderate sensation there. If you are feeling a little sensation, but not too much of anything, and you would like to explore the twist, I invite you to take the left hand, bring the left hand out in front of you over to the right, and then bring it behind you so you're bringing your torso down over to the right. And I have a block behind me to rest my head on so I'm not resting on the hard surface. Maybe you choose to rest it on the hard surface or bring your head to a cushion or a pillow. Or maybe you choose not to rest your head at all. You can maintain an upright position in this as well. Wherever you are in your version of the twist, relax the legs, relax the torso, relax the belly, and stay present for the mild to moderate sensation in your target areas. Again, perhaps the outside of the left hip, inside of the right leg, and now maybe the spine, the low spine in particular. Notice if you're clenching your legs or your torso. If you are, give your body permission to relax. And if you're clenching because your body's trying to stop you from entering a painful posture, make note of that and adjust the posture so you can find comfort in the mild to moderate sensation and not go into pain so you can get as creative as you'd like with the prop. I know some people really enjoy doing this posture with a cushion and then a bolster on top of the cushion. So they have an elevated torso stretching behind them. So you can really make this pose your own, making sure you're staying within that mild to moderate threshold of sensation. Wherever you are in the pose, add some weight to the hands. Gently walk the torso to an upright position. If you have any props behind you, you might choose to move them out of the way. Taking a few breaths here first, before we take that left hand back Cross the front of the body, bringing it back behind you. Torso is now facing the front again. Inhale both the knees back up to center. And exhale, straighten both legs out in front of you. Taking a moment here, using this pose as a resonance or resting pose. Noticing how the spine feels, particularly the left side of the low spine compared to the right. Noticing how the legs and the hips feel. Seeing if you can keep your awareness in those target areas with each breath, noticing how those sensations may or may not change. Maybe rocking the feet from left to right again if you notice they're returning to their normal state. And then take the feet back to the mat, knees pointed up to the sky, 
doing this on the opposite side, walking the feet so they're slightly wider than the hips, and then exhale, bring the knees from left to right, windshield wipe those legs. Exhale now, bring both knees towards the left side of the mat. Again, if you were looking down at your legs, they could look like deer legs, hence the name of this pose. Some people call them windmill legs, the legs look like windmills, but if when I look down in between my legs, I see something that resembles an upside down triangle. Target area on this side is potentially the outside of the right hip, the inside line of the left leg. If you're already feeling a mild to moderate sensation here, you can stay right here. If you're not feeling much of anything, then I can invite you to explore the twist. So to do the twist, again, if you want to use a prop, you can. I'll be using a block. Take that right hand, bring it across the front of your body, reaching over to the left side. And then bring it all the way behind you as far as you comfortably can. And if you can't get it behind you, directly behind you, maybe your twist is over to the corner. That's okay too. Maybe your twist is even just over the left leg. Again, your pose doesn't have to look like my pose or anyone else's pose. It's more about what it feels like in your body. Wherever you are in your twist or if you're in an upright posture, relax the legs. Give the thighs and the glutes permission to release. Relax the belly. Start deepening the breaths, bringing your awareness to the legs and the low spine. Noticing if the mind has wandered, gently bring it back to the present sensation, knowing you can change the posture when the sensation changes, if you need to go deeper or if you need to come out of it. Wherever you are in deer, add some weight to the hands, bringing your torso to a more upright position and pausing there for a moment. And then when you're ready, walking that right hand back to the front, reach it behind you. Torso should be facing the front of the screen now or wherever you started your pose with. And then inhale the knees back to center. Exhale the feet straight out in front of you. Again, using this as a resonance pose, noticing how the spine feels, how the hips feel. With each breath that you take, do you notice any sensations changing? If your body's calling for some movement, maybe you choose to rock the feet from left to right or shake out the knees. And once it feels as though the spine and the legs have regained their normal sensation, We'll make our way into our next pose. For, to get into the next pose, we're going to start in tabletop. Coming onto our mat the long way on hands and knees. 
taking a minute here to check in with the body, making note of how the wrist joints feel. If it feels like this is too much pressure on the wrist, you can make fists with the wrists and stabilize the wrist joint by not moving. Noticing how the knees feel here. If you have tender knees or if, you have, if you've had any previous knee injury, you might choose to add some extra cushion beneath the knees. Gazing down in between your hands, we're gonna go into some cat and cow, some nice movement for our spine. Inhale, drop the belly, lift the chin, tailbone goes up to the sky for cow. Exhale, tuck the chin to the chest, press up and into the shoulder blades as you round the spine for cat, tuck the tailbone under. Inhale, drop the belly, lift the chin, cow. Exhale, tuck the chin, round the spine, cat. Inhale, drop the belly, lift the chin, cow. Exhale, tuck the chin, round the spine, cat. Two more to the pace of your own breath. When you've completed your fifth cat and cow, returning to a tabletop position, gazing down in between the hands, inhale, take the right foot, sweep it forward in between both hands. You're framing the right foot. We're moving into dragon pose here, and I'm going to get two blocks ready on either side of my mat up top. As I bring my right foot forward, Bring that left hip down towards the mat, dropping the left knee and relaxing the left leg in its entirety. This is a deep opening stretch for the front side of the left leg. It's also one of the spiciest poses in yin, so you might notice you enter in a mild state and then it quickly goes to a spicy or a painful state in which case I invite you to use props to support your practice so you can explore what it feels like to elevate the torso and add some weight to those props on either side of you. Or perhaps just one side or if you don't have those types of props to support you, you can place both hands on the right knee and add some weight to those hands. Wherever you are in your version of Dragon, relax that left leg. It's the most important part. This is a really great pose for people who sit all day long. We tend to get really tight in our psoas when our body is continually crunched forward. Opening up our psoas muscle like this, the top of the left thigh. It's a great counter pose. It can also help release a lot of back tension. Continue to take some deep breaths. Knowing you can adjust the pose if it gets too spicy, too painful. Or if you lose the sensation, you might choose to go down a little bit deeper, maybe into lizard. Exhale, Add, shift your hips over your left heel as you straighten the right foot in front of you for half split. Again, you can continue to use the props if it supports you or, or not. That right foot, the right leg should be in a straightened leg state, but you don't have to keep it straight. You can add a micro bend or a big bend. You might want to add some pulsating movements like I'm doing here very slowly and gently. 
This pose might open up the back side of the hamstring, but it's also releasing the front side of the left hip. So you're giving that left hip a little bit of a reprieve, allowing those tissues to regain normal sensation. Again, we don't want to move too quickly into the other side. When it feels as though that left hip has returned to its normal state, walking the fingertips forward, bending that right knee again, curling the toes of the left foot under behind you and adding some weight to that left foot so you can bring the right foot back to meet the left in tabletop. Setting up for the opposite side, inhale, bring the left leg forward. In between both hands, notice how the left hips the left hip space feels. If it's still too tender, you can pause and wait until it regains its normal sensation. And when it does, you can release the hips towards the mat, dropping the right knee and the top of the right foot to the mat. Relaxing that right leg in its entirety. Again, maybe choosing to use props to support the practice. You can elevate the torso some more. You can bring the hands to the knees. Maybe you have the hands and the elbows all the way down on the mat. There really is an infinite number of ways you can get into each pose. Even a slight micro bend to the right or to the left can change the sensation of the pose entirely. So making this your version of dragon and then relaxing that right leg. Taking full deep breaths, keeping your awareness with the sensation in the target area. Being mindful of how this posture changes from mild to intense pretty quickly. Knowing if that's true for you, you can adjust the posture. One thing that may happen in a spicy pose like dragon is we tend to have an emotional response or you might notice your emotions not connecting to the pose itself. So perhaps you're feeling sadness here. Most people, many people I should say, they feel anger in this posture because it's, it's a pretty intense pose, but many people hold emotions in their hips. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a specific emotion that is released when we do this pose. So if you're feeling an intense emotion like sadness or anger, frustration, agitation, know that you can treat your emotional yoga practice just like your physical one and you can choose to explore it or come out of it a little bit. On our next exhale, we're slowly going to start shifting our hips over our right heel, straightening the left leg to some degree, coming into a half split on this side again, using this pose as a resonance pose. So this left knee does not need to be perfectly straight. You can have a micro bend or a really big bend, or if you'd like to add some pulsating movements, you can. We're just allowing that right hip some reprieve. When it feels as though that right hip has regained its normal sensation, walking the fingertips forward, bending the left knee, turning the toes of the right foot under behind you and adding some weight to that right foot. So you can bring the left leg back to meet the right in tabletop. From here, we're gonna curl both of our toes on the mat behind us, being very careful if you have socks on and if you have a slippery surface here, because this is the only pose of the day we're gonna be adding um, some pressure to our hands and feet at the same time. And you might 
You want to make sure you have a stable, a stable surface to put your hands and feet on. Inhale, lift the hips up to the sky, downward facing dog. Taking any movements you feel you need in downward dog. Bending the knees both at the same time or one at a time. Pressing the rib cage towards the thighs, opening up the front of the chest. Maybe you're elevating on your toes and then bringing the heels down towards the mat. Finding stillness and down dog. Three deep breaths here. Inhale, look at your hands. Exhale, walk your feet to your hands, coming right into ragdoll. Feet about hip width distance apart. Add a generous bend to the knees here. We don't want our knees perfectly straight. Add some bend. Allow the head to rest heavy over the knees. Perhaps your hands stay on the mat or on a prop of some sort. But if you can and it feels okay to do so, perhaps you explore grabbing opposite elbows and allowing the force of gravity to pull the spine slowly down towards the mat. Feels good to rock side to side, you might choose to do so. Finding stillness in Ragdoll, taking three deep breaths here. And exhale, release. The hands to the mat, gently straighten the legs. And then exhale, fully bend the legs. We're coming into a seated posture with the legs out in front of us. Noticing how the legs and the spine feel. Perhaps giving them a little bit of a shake or rocking the feet from left to right. And then setting up for our next posture, which will be supported bridge. I'm going to move my blanket away from underneath because my surface is very slippery. Um, so you might want to do the same as well. And I'm also going to have a prop ready to one of my sides. I'll be using um, a block, but you can use any prop that works for you. Perhaps a cushion would work for this or a pillow or maybe a rolled up towel. We're gonna come onto our back and lie on our back for a moment, bringing your awareness to your spine. From here, we're going to bring our feet to the mat, knees pointed up to the sky, tucking the tailbone under, resting here for a moment, noticing again how the spine feels. In a moment, we're gonna elevate our hips up to the sky and place some type of prop beneath it. It doesn't need to be a very big prop, even just one inch of having our hips elevated off of the mat can give us the sensation in the low spine and the front of the belly that we're looking for. As you inhale, engaging the leg muscles, lifting the hips up to the ceiling, place that prop beneath the sacrum any degree that works for you. So perhaps, again, if you have a block like I do, you do it on the low level, the medium level, or the high level. Doesn't matter what level you do it on, or even if you have a yoga block, again, you can use any prop. Just getting your hips off of the mat is what's important. Notice how this feels in the low spine. Seeing if you can relax the low spine. A very gentle stretch there. 
if you feel like you can go a little bit deeper or you want to explore also having a secondary target area of the front line of the body, you can explore straightening one leg at a time or both legs at the same time. While you're in this pose, if you notice the target area sensation changing, again, feel free to adjust it. You can make that prop higher or lower, or you can move the prop entirely. A great alternative to this pose is to lie down on your belly and to bring your elbows and forearms to the mat in Sphinx pose. Just a little bit of spinal extension. Relax the legs, relax the belly, allow the block and gravity to do the work here. If you're in a full extension of this pose with your feet out in front of you, bring the feet to the mat. Pause there for a moment. Inhale, add some weight to the feet as you gently lift the hips off of the prop. Remove the prop from beneath you and then exhale the hips down towards the mat one vertebra at a time. Exhale, straighten out both legs. Using corpse pose as a resonance pose, notice how the front line of the body feels, perhaps the belly, the front side of the hips, the thighs, and the low spine. And it feels as though the spine has regained normal sensation, bringing feet back to the mat, knees pointed up to the sky, and gently windshield wipe the legs from left to right. Releasing the spine. After a few of these, inhale, bring both knees into the chest, hugging your hands around the knees. If you can, if not, just bringing them towards the torso, maybe choosing to rock from left to right if it feels good on the low spine. Exhale, bring the knees back down to the mat. I'm sorry, the feet back down to the mat. Inhale, take the right ankle, place it on top of the left knee. If you were looking down in between your legs, you might see a shape that resembles an upside down triangle again. The target area here is the outside of the right hip, so notice if you feel any sensation here. Right now, you can stay right here. If you're not feeling much of anything, I invite you to take that right hand, bring it in the middle of that upside down triangle to grab the inside of the left thigh, Take the left hand and reach it to the outside of that left thigh and use those hands to gently pull that left thigh into the chest. The moment you start to bring that, those feet towards the torso, you might notice the sensation change in the outside of the right hip and the right glute. If you're looking for a little bit more of a sensation, you can use that right elbow as some leverage by pressing into the right knee crease. 
And if this pose is challenging for you on your back, know that this is something that you can do in an upright position. This is also a great pose to do if you have a yoga strap or a belt or a tie for a robe. You can use that to pull the leg closer to the torso as well. Wherever you are in your version of reclined, figure four. Relax the legs. Deepen the breath and bring your awareness to the outside of the right hip and right glute. Exhale, release the clasp behind the left thigh and slowly lower the left foot to the mat, keeping the right ankle on the knee for a moment. Noticing how the sensations change in the outside of that right hip. And once it feels as though it's regaining its normal sensation, you can carefully take the right ankle off of the left knee, bringing both knees to touch, walking the feet out wider than your hips. Resting here for a moment. Then setting up for the opposite side, bringing the left ankle on top of the right knee. Pausing here for a moment, noticing if you feel your mild to moderate sensation already in the outside of the left hip. If you do, you can stay right here. If you don't, I invite you to take that left hand, reach it inside the upside down triangle. Take the right hand, reach it to the outside of the right thigh. Use both hands to grab that right thigh and pull the right leg into the chest. Any amount will change the sensation, so notice where you need to stop to make this pose work for your mild to moderate threshold. If you want to use that left elbow as leverage, you can press it into the left knee crease, relax both legs, your next exhale gently start to lower the right foot back down to the mat keeping the left ankle on top of the right knee for a moment and when you're ready removing the left ankle from the knee bringing both knees to touch widening the feet so they're a little wider than the hips relaxing the legs Noticing any sensation on the outside of either hip.
When it feels as though they've regained normal sensation, inhale, bring both those knees back into the chest. Give yourself a great big hug. You might choose to rock side to side if it feels good to do so. And when you've rolled all the way over onto the left side, pause there in fetal position. Stacking the right shoulder on top of right, left, I'm sorry, right shoulder on top of left, <laughs> right hand on top of left, right hip on top of left. Inhale that right hand across the sky over to the mat behind you or the ground behind you. Starting a simple spinal twist. Adjusting this posture any way that works for you so you can really get creative with the leg placement. Perhaps both legs are straight out in front of you. Maybe you're straightening one leg and bending the other. Maybe you're crossing one leg on top of the other. Really find your version of the twist that works for your body today. Then you can adjust the upper body. Maybe you have cactus arms. You're opening up the front of the chest by bending both elbows. Maybe you bring one hand to the hip and use the elbow as a kickstand. Or maybe your hands are just out by your sides, gazing over the right shoulder. Once you have your version of twist, completely surrender to the mat, relaxing every muscle in the body. Inhale, bring that right hand back across the sky over to meet the left. Pausing in fetal position. Bringing the awareness to the spine, noticing any sensations that are changing. When it feels as though the spine is wreaking normal sensation, rolling it back onto the back. Taking a full body stretch when you get there by inhaling the arms up overhead. Legs come out straight in front of you, getting as long and tall as you possibly can on the mat. Exhale, rolling onto the right side for fetal position. Stacking the left hip on top of right, left shoulder on top of right, left hand on top of right. Inhale, reach that left arm across the sky, over to the mat behind you. The head can follow the hand. Adjusting the legs to be any version of the twist that works for you. Maybe bringing one knee closer to the chest, straightening both legs, or just one leg, crossing one leg over the other. Then adjusting the arms, perhaps you have cactus arms or they're straight out in front of you or bringing the left hand to the hip, whatever version best suits you on this side. It doesn't need to be the same as the left side. Once you have your version of the twist, completely surrender by relaxing every muscle in the body.
Inhale, bring that left hand back across the ceiling over to meet the right, pausing in fetal position. Bringing your awareness to the spine, noticing any sensations as they change. feels as though the spine has regained normal sensation, gently rolling up to the back one last time, getting anything you need to set up for savasana. So if you need to re-add any cushioning, or you need a blanket, or you would like to use a prop to support your practice, to support your savasana practice, you can. For Savasana, if it feels good to, for you today, I invite you to bring the soles of your feet to touch, widening the knees open to either edge for Supta Baddha Konasana, reclined butterfly. Bringing the hands anywhere that's comfortable for you, perhaps or down by your sides, palms facing up, or maybe you're choosing to place the hands somewhere on the body. And if it feels comfortable to do so, gently close the eyes. Doing a brief body scan to release and relax every muscle, starting with the feet and the legs, giving them permission to rest heavy. Relaxing the belly. Relaxing the shoulders, the arms, and the hands, allowing them to rest heavy. Relaxing the neck and the head and all of the muscles on the face, including your tongue, your jaw, and your eyebrows. Feeling fully supported by the earth beneath you as you surrender to your practice and receive the benefits. your next inhale take a full deep breath in through the nose filling the belly the rib cage and the chest with breath noticing any sensations that enter the body with the breath gently wiggle the fingers and the toes and rock the head from left to right like you're shaking your head no, but really slowly. Take the left hand, place it to the outside of the left thigh and use that hand to gently bring the left leg on top of right as you roll into fetal position. 
on the right side and pause there for a moment, keeping the eyes closed if it feels comfortable to do so. And then from fetal position, using the hands to press yourself back into a comfortable grounded posture. Perhaps that means seated or standing if seated is not comfortable for you. Returning to that long spine, drawing shoulders away from ears, bringing hands to heart center. Honoring your practice as I honor yours. May your practice be of benefit to you and to all of those around you. Thank you very much for sharing your practice with me. I bow my head in gratitude and honor. Namaste. Thank you, everyone.